Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the clarity tool in Lightroom. So the clarity tool in Lightroom can be extremely powerful, but it's often overused or overlooked. So today I'm going to show you exactly how it works the best ways to use it and some of the issues when using it and things to be really careful of so that you don't ruin your image. Okay, so let's jump straight into Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and today we're going to be using this image of Rosie White of Dance Lovely fame. And we are going to be looking at the clarity tool which is over here in the right hand panel. So it's under basic and then it's under presence and it's clarity just here. So let's just slide it around and see what happens. If we boost our clarity, as we'd expect, things kind of pop more, adds a little bit more contrast, you might say. And if you go in the opposite direction, things have less clarity. So it's more blurry, let's say, or the contrast is way less. Now, importantly, Clarity is not contrast. It does work slightly differently. And let me explain the difference between the two. So if we look at contrast, if we boost contrast all the way up, this is the effect we get. Whereas clarity, this is the effect we get, very different. And if we reduce contrast, this is the effect we get, very gray and washed out. Whereas with clarity, we get this, which is very different. So what is the difference? Well, the key is up here in the histogram. If we look at the histogram just here. Watch what happens with contrast. Everything is, is changes evenly. So if we boost it all the way up, it pulls the histogram at each end and all of the middle section. Whereas if we reduce it to the opposite direction, it pulls in all the sides and we get this big peak in the middle. Now, so that's the entire tonal range is being edited equally across the entire image. The highlights, the darks, and all of the colors and shades within that. Now, the way that clarity works differently, look at the histogram, we have this beautiful mountain in the middle. Now, if we were to boost it, now rather than basically pushing out the whole thing, even the ends here, it's only going to affect the middle section. Watch this. So what's gonna happen is, see it broadens this up here, but the edges essentially stay the same. And if we go the opposite direction, the edges stay the same out here pretty much, yet the mountain in the middle gets higher. Why is that? So it's the mid-tones that it's affecting. And let's take a look so that I can really show you how, what I mean by that. Let's zoom in here. Okay, so we can see she has great definition. She's a dancer, so she would have. Okay, but we've got some shadows under here and we have a highlight spot just here. So let's have a look to see what happens. Now, if we use contrast and we boost the contrast, the darks are going to get darker. This highlight's got even lighter, okay? And all of these shadows have got really dark as well. The entire image has been affected. If we do the same thing with clarity, however, we boost it. Now watch this dark section here, okay? We boost it all the way up. It stays the same. And the highlight section, bring it back to the normal. Watch this section here. Bring up the highlights. It stays exactly the same. The only thing which has been affected is all of these areas, which are all of the mid-tones. So let's have a look at the highlight section, okay? Let's have a look what happens when you take the contrast down. Watch here, okay? If we look at the contrast down, see it gets a lot lighter. This area has now been lightened and this light area has actually been darkened. Now, at clarity, we go the opposite direction. Watch what happens to this section here when we go reduce clarity. Nothing changes, it stays exactly the same. Even the highlight section pretty much stays exactly the same. So. In this image, if we were to change the contrast, okay, it's going to affect the entire thing and we get a lot more saturation as well. Whereas the clarity, what it's going to allow us to do is essentially we can leave this alone and leave this alone and all of this area here, which is her muscles, essentially we could boost it, making her have bigger muscles essentially. But that's how it might be used in an image. But you don't want to go too far because it's incredibly grungy, okay? Now, 
A few other things to note with this. First of all, the thing to note is this. Clarity is actually inside the gradient, the radial, and the brush tool. So that means that you can do localized editing. So if I, for example, did want to do that to her stomach, what I would do is I'd go in here and I'd select the brush, I'd boost the clarity up here, and then essentially, with a nice soft brush, I would literally paint on over the top here. And if I now zoom out, okay, you can see I've really boosted that there. I'm not gonna do that because I don't think she needs it at all. So, so other things that you can use it for, and again, I actually wouldn't use it for this, but people use it for skin smoothing. So again, let's zoom all the way in, and for this section, let's keep it the, uh, the same area. Okay, so we're gonna come in down here, and if you were, if, for example, you wanted to do skin smoothing, we would come in here, we would reduce the clarity, and then you could literally paint onto the skin, and you can see what's happened there. It's actually done some smoothing of the skin and you could do it on the arms and all of these things. I personally wouldn't do that because again, I think it's ruining the image and I don't think it's the best way to do a retouch. I would do it in Photoshop. But anyway, each to their own. But remember, if you go too far with this and let's go too far to her face, okay? Because this is a, a, it's a thing that I see all the time. People coming in to an image and going, okay, let's do some skin smoothing here on just the skin, okay? And basically, uh, let me do a quick job. And this is what people do is they do it this quickly, <laughs> okay? Let's come back out down here. Uh, sorry, messed up there, my Wacom tablet. I so what's happened here is I've done some skin smoothing, but all of a sudden she looks fake, she looks horrible. It's a horrible example of um, how you would use this tool and of editing at all. So I'm going to delete that because I wouldn't ever do that. Okay, so you can see now how you might use this. Now again, let's bring, let's have a look at this whole image. You can use it to create a grunge effect like so. so this is really grungy, really, really, I don't know, moody feeling, which is really great if that's what you're into. Now, don't, my advice is don't overdo it. And this is why I wouldn't overdo it. For this example, I'm gonna come over here to a photo using buildings because it's got some nice, simple lines involved here. Now, because what it does is it uses the mid-tones, it actually looks around the area, I think, because this is what I see anyway, and it's kind of using different areas from each side of the line, and it kind of blends them together. Let me explain what I mean by this. Let's turn the exposure all the way down, okay, on this image. Now, if I was to come, this is the image normally, okay? Look at the edge here. If I was to boost the clarity, watch what happens. We now have this white line down the side. In fact, look down here in this area, okay, and See how it kind of bleeds over when I add clarity to it, okay? It does this weird thing. And it's really great to look over at this section, okay? Look up here. If I was to take this back down to normal, looks absolutely fine. Now, when I add all of this, it adds in these white flecks and it kind of gets a little bit confused. So I wouldn't push, push it too far, especially when we're looking at something which is set against a very plain background. Okay, another way to just give an example of this is let me come to this here. This is something that I built and I like to use for examples. So let's, oh, let's just unlock this. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to look at what happens to these tones when we use clarity. Now, by using it, contrast, you see reduce contrast, everything gets a little bit more even and then you increase it and the ends become stronger, you know, lighter, darker, increasing contrast. Very simple. Now, what we can do with clarity, if we add this, watch what happens. All of these lines, they've kind of created this, this extra kind of light to dark feel because this side's darker and this side's lighter. So it's kind of averaged it. And then look here, it gives this blur around the numbers. Now, if I go the opposite direction, Look at this, it's added this haze. Now that's what's gonna happen to your images. So that's why I would suggest don't push this too far unless you really know what you're doing.
So that was a detailed overview of the Clarity tool, how it works and where you might use it. Now, my name's Ed Gregory and you can always find me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Clearly Ed. And if you like this video, please give me a huge thumbs up. Well, you can only give a normal thumbs up and definitely subscribe. Massive help if you hit subscribe. Loads of other videos on their way. This is Ed Gregory, photosincolor.com.